You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Merry Christmas and happy holidays from Drone U HQ, all the way from colorful Colorado. As always, my name is Paul. And my name is Rob. And for anybody that's wondering, we do have basements in Colorado. <laughs> yes, Martin, we do. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, a lot more than I thought. Probably uh, 90% of the homes. Anyways. But in New Mexico, not so much. In New Mexico, not so much. No. Uh, but thank you for joining us. Really, really excited to be sitting here, hanging out with you guys, and appreciate that you spent a few minutes of your day with us very, very much. And if you've got a question, we want to hear from you. AskDroneU.com. Get them in. Definitely get them in at askadroneu.com. Also, thank you for everyone um, who is working with us through the transition of the community again. We do appreciate it. Um, lots of new stuff coming out for all of you guys, though. Very excited about it. And I just want to give you a quick update for this coming year. This is going to be like our mass update uh, for content. So I just want to let you know we've got a lot of new advanced kind of stuff coming out and uh, very excited to help all of you even more. So... Today's show is sponsored by Colorado Drone Chargers because let's be honest, if you're a serious drone pilot, then those little uh, manufacturer based drone chargers are probably not going to cut the cheese for you, at least if you're out in the field and you're out in the field a lot. So if you need a serious battery charging solution because you're a serious drone pilot, then you've got to check out coloradodronechargers.com. Check them out. My name is Martin. I live in Wisconsin. I have taken your drone mapping course, and I use Inland Reach to mark my ground control points and also checkpoints. But one thing nobody ever explains to you, what do you do with these checkpoints? What do I compare and do? How do I know if, if my ground control points are bad? Nobody explains that to me. They just tell you to get some checkpoints. Please explain to me how to use these to know if I'm doing something good or bad. Bye, Martin. <laughs> Martin, um, I like you. <laughs> uh, it's a great question as uh, apparently that's not something we've really gone into much based on your reaction to the question. Well, I think we go into it a lot during in-person classes and mm. I think it showcases a deviation between kind of like the in-person and the online because the class has evolved a lot. Yeah. And again, you spoke about updating classes. That's probably something that would be added. Yeah. I want to go deep into GCPs because the industry has matured so much. There's much better options out there. And this particular issue is something that hangs up a lot of people because checkpoints can have varying definitions dependent upon who you are talking to mm. or what software you are using. You know, some people say a checkpoint is, you know, you go out and you use your GPS rover, your GNSS receiver, that's the same thing. And you go out and you shoot over a survey nail, which is a known point. Some people call that a checkpoint, right? People who are creating maps and models in PIX4D or in other softwares know that there's ground control points and then there are checkpoints. And those checkpoints in theory are supposed to essentially check the um, accuracy of marking your GCPs. Essentially, a checkpoint in PIX4D Mapper and Matic is saying, hey, we know that this position is this position in the world, and we want to use that to cross-reference the human error of marking our GCPs. You know, it's funny. I still remember, at least I think this is the right context, at the Catholic school that we did the Denver class at, mm -hmm. for some reason, I remember you showing people checkpoints where, like, the grass or something met the sidewalk. Yeah, on right? natural marker, yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. the natural markers that you were using. So that, I don't know, that was just an interesting frame of reference for me. But um, I don't know how you make sure that you're not doing it wrong or right, like Martin's asking. Well, I, and I got to say, Martin, I really appreciate your question because this comes up in almost every in-person mapping class because a lot of people ask the question, well, are checkpoints really checking or verifying the accuracy of my GCPs as a whole? And let me paint a picture in layman's terms and you guys can make the, the decision on your own. But let's say that I'm using the same piece of equipment 
to mark my GCPs and to mark my checkpoints, right? Let's, As an, an example of same piece of equipment would be what? Like an RS2. Okay. It could be a DA2 from Trimble or it could be a, a GS20 from Leica, right? Okay. Let's just Not say- Not a propeller though. Um, not for this example. Okay. Yeah, uh, not for this example. But let's say they were using um, a Trimble DA2, okay? And let's say that you're out shooting your, your checkpoints and let's say that you have a newer guy who's shooting points and he shoots it really close to a metal roof, right? He doesn't check his receiver to see that he's got a huge error. He's got a float, not a fix. And so he keeps shooting checkpoints and then he goes out and he shoots his GCPs and his checkpoints. If I'm using the same piece of equipment that could potentially have error Am I really checking the accuracy or verifying the accuracy of my data? Um, and, and not if that error's already sort of been established as inherent. Exactly. That's that's just exactly the point is that right. if I use the same piece of equipment to do my checkpoints and my GCPs, I'm not really verifying absolute accuracy. All that I'm doing is potentially verifying how I marked my GCPs, which a lot of people go back and forth as far as what GCP marking should be. It's very formulaic, and honestly, if you want the smallest amount of ellipsoid error, you really try to find the photos in reference of a circle around your GCP, almost like changing a tire, where you pick one photo here, one photo there, one photo there. And mm. honestly, the reference and framework to do all that is not that easy, because all you do is you get a list of photos, and it's like, mark those photos. It's almost like you're creating your own world instead of the real world. Does that make sense? Uh, I'm not sure I'm, I'm tracking well, right now. Well, just in terms of the goal is to make your maps match with reality. Absolute accuracy, yep. Correct. And based on what you just described in terms of the example, if you've got some inherent error, you're not going to be able to do that. So you might it might look accurate, right? But until you verify that it is, it's a world you've created in effect. Not the real world. A hundred percent. And and a lot of people do, you know, rely on checkpoints to provide them with an absolute um, RMS error. And I think that that is wrought with potential issues. And I say that because if you really want to check and verify the, the absolute accuracy, again, you're going to want to use a third party application. This is a benefit of using something like SiteScan drone to map because you have a built in access to ArcGIS, which is an absolute form of, you know, verifying accuracy. So in all honesty, I think Martin actually hits the nail on the head here of being like, well, wait a minute, these checkpoints, do I really need to do this? In all honesty, yes, it does help, but it's not, don't be fooled. It's not a verification of absolute accuracy. It's a verification of how the user marked your GCPs. So, so how do you bridge that gap to make it the most useful action possible? Well, if you really want to get checkpoints and really do it right, you would want to use, in my opinion, a separate piece of equipment over a known point and shoot that known point with a landing pad or some sort of marker so it's easy to see from the sky. Remember, you're probably not going to be able to see a nail on the ground unless it's like a P1. So to answer your question, it would be use a separate piece of equipment and shoot over a known marker that's like publicly available. That's going to be a true, true, true um, verification of accuracy. And for all the geospatial wonks out there, they're going to be like, but Paul, but Paul, you should do three because there's three axes of GPS. And that's technically the most accurate means and methodologies of doing it. The only problem is, is there's no survey nails on the Z axis. So uh, we're going to do, <laughs> do the best that we can. <laughs> so, <laughs> huh. OK, yeah, I guess I never thought about that, but I've never thought about a lot of this. So that's not new. <laughs> <laughs> but this is a very common point. And as more and more of these drone mapping softwares come out and they try to stream line stuff um it it's really begging the question of just how accurate are these maps because for example we are limited by our overall absolute accuracy based off of the quality of our photos right how what is your actual ground sampling distance how did you actually tie down the gcps to the map because again with these newer softwares even uh, this is what tripped me up in my line of thought. Even PIX40 is kind of um, going against what they've been traditionally teaching with how you mark GCPs. So when you say newer softwares, just to clarify, you're just talking about the most recent updated versions of softwares that we're all pretty much used to. Sure, yeah. But in specific, I'm talking about PIX40 Matic versus PIX40 Mapper because in PIX40 Matic, 
PIX4D is kind of like negating the rules that they've been teaching everyone as far as GCP marking. I say that because they almost copied drone deploy and said, well, we know we've been teaching that there's a trigonomic relationship between how much you zoom into a photo and mark that center point to its absolute accuracy, <laughs> yeah. right? And now Pix4D Matic, you can only zoom in half of what you used to be able to zoom in when you're marking GCPs. Oh, that was one of the powerful elements of Pix4D uh -huh. and the desktop application. Uh-huh. Not anymore. So. Really? I remember the conversations that on good you used to have back in the day <laughs> the on ones. that very issue. <laughs> yeah. Well, because drone deploy wasn't doing it, because measure wasn't doing it, because every other cloud process was not doing it. Mm. Um, and now, you know, I think what's happened is you've got a maturity of the industry that's like, you know what, maybe we're too focused on this number that doesn't matter as much as we think it does. And so we're going to streamline this process and make it a little bit more faster because I think that there is an inherent relationship between efficiency and accuracy, Yeah, if that makes sense. Absolutely. And you just have to assume, giving the benefit of the doubt, that their data there being Pix4D and, and whoever, they're just seeing that it's not being used and that people don't ultimately need that in mass. And maybe there's other ways. I think that that's accurate. How, so short of having the ability to do that in Matic, how would you go about making sure in like you would in, would have in the old days uh, still with third, Mapper? Still third party software verification. Okay. Still, like virtual Mapper, ArcGIS, QGIS, et cetera. But is it going to be harder to get to that point because you can't zoom in and nail it down? It would be harder to get to a point of like true absolute accuracy. Yeah. A hundred percent because you're limited in how much that you can make the quote unquote accuracy. But again, this is like the level of detail that we're talking about right now is probably only going to be um, apparent to civil engineers. So actual surveyors are going to care about this stuff. Very much so. Okay. Although, I don't know. I don't know. As I think about that, I'm like, I don't know. Have you watched people take elevations at a construction site? It's pretty, well, it's no, pretty I bad. I mean, I see them, but I don't know what the hell they're doing. So. It's a 50-50 done very well or what the hell are you doing? So, well, huh. Yeah. Anyways. For I mean, example, for example, I was driving down 30 the other day, right? And they're building that new neighborhood right here yeah. or right here. Uh -huh. um, and a guy was shooting surveying points and he's right below a transformer, right below power lines. And it's a really humid day. Okay. That is three examples of no, no, no. Humidity means water attenuation, which means signal attenuation really is what it means. I kind of messed that up. But when you're below the power line, too, there's that ferromagnetic field, that coronal sure. ejection, which is going to throw an error. And so it's just like, dude, why are you shooting a point right there? Like, just walk 15 feet out, you know? So that said, I mean, the occurrences of misdrawn lines and misdrawn property lines and so forth in America, at least, it's incredibly rare. Especially in a neighborhood. Well, remember what Next Gen said in Florida? And I mean, it might be regionally dependent because maybe you, it is. The, I remember the owner from Next Gen said, We find that one in three surveys has some form of human error in it. Yeah, I guess it would be a matter of degrees. It's like an auditing. You, there's a, a, an element of error that's expected and is okay. Mm. Um, I mean, title companies insure all these things every single day. Yeah. So I don't know. It's fascinating. I just, I wonder sometimes. If they're, they being, again, pix 4 go automatic if they're not right, like, we don't need to get that minutiae. Can I turn minutiae into a verb? Um, I don't know. It's just interesting to think about. Totally. Interesting to think about. But I don't know. Have we answered his question? I think we've answered his question. I think checkpoints are valuable, but they're going to be valuable for checking or validating how you marked your GCPs, at least in pix 4 mapper. Um, in other forms of software, it's going to have different forms of verification depending on how that data is used. But in a general sense, the location-based information from the checkpoint is typically withheld from processing. So mm. um, I think that answers the question in a nutshell. Um, cool. Don't forget, redundancy is still important, guys, especially for the very important maps that are being done. So yeah. anyway, I think that does answer awesome. the question. If you have a question, ask DroneU.com. Yeah, thank you guys for joining us again. Thank you. We'll see you next time here at Drone U HQ. <laughs> <laughs>